Your safety, the safety of your fellow workers, and the safety of the traveling public will depend on you performing your flagging duties properly. An effective flagging operation is not something that just happens. It's the result of planning, proper training, and the use of good flagging procedures. This program was developed to help you prepare to be a flagger. As a flagger, you're in contact with the public more than anyone else on the job. Your attitude and appearance directly affect the public's view of operations. A flagger's responsibilities are critical in keeping the work zone safe. Flaggers should have the following minimum qualifications, skills, and abilities. A sense of responsibility for the safety of the public and the workers. Adequate training in safe temporary traffic control practices. Be in good physical condition, including sight, mobility, and hearing. Be mentally alert and have the ability to react in an emergency. They should have a courteous but firm manner and skills in communicating specific instructions clearly, firmly, and courteously. Your first responsibility as a flagger is to ensure you have the correct equipment to do your job. Improper equipment reduces the driver's ability to see you and react appropriately. Neat dress and appearance also helps you gain the driver's respect, making your job that much easier. The Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices specifies that the flagger shall wear high visibility safety apparel that meets the performance class two requirements of the ANSI ISEA 107-2010 standards. Its retro reflective material shall be visible at a minimum distance of 1,000 feet. The safety apparel shall be clean and fastened securely so it is visible 360 degrees around the flagger. The flagger should also wear an approved hard hat, steel-toed safety shoes, and safety glasses. It is also a good idea to carry an air horn or whistle to alert your coworkers if a vehicle appears likely to run into the work area. The main traffic control device used by flaggers is the stop slow paddle. This sign is octagon shaped, at least 18 by 18 inches, with six inch high letters. The stop face shall have white letters and a white border on a red background. The slow face shall have black letters and a black border on an orange background. The sign is mounted on a rigid staff that is tall enough to be seen by approaching drivers when resting on the ground, ideally measuring at least five feet from the ground to the bottom of the sign. A seven foot paddle is even more visible. Before beginning any flagging operation, advanced warning signs must be installed. For most flagging operations, this will include a road work ahead sign, a one lane road ahead sign, and a graphic flagger symbol sign. In some cases, other advanced warning signs, such as a be prepared to stop sign, may be used. But in all cases, the flagger signs must be in place before the flagging operation begins. With advanced warning signs in place and with proper equipment, the flaggers may now begin controlling traffic. Because drivers are sometimes tired, preoccupied, or impaired, you must remain alert at all times and stay on your feet facing oncoming traffic. Always stand alone in a highly visible location away from other workers and work vehicles. However, never stand directly in the path of an approaching vehicle and never turn your back to approaching traffic. Generally, flagging operations require three basic skills, stopping, releasing, and slowing traffic. To stop traffic, stand on the shoulder of the roadway with the stop paddle away from your body on or near the edge of the pavement. Look directly at the approaching traffic. Raise your free hand with the palm exposed to the approaching driver. Make eye contact with the driver. After you have stopped the first vehicle, remain on the shoulder of the road. This is your normal flagging location. Do not enter the roadway to try to get a driver's attention or after traffic has stopped. If you feel you wish to become more visible after stopping two or three vehicles, you may move toward the center line, maintaining eye contact with the first driver. 
Do not cross the center line. Do this only when absolutely necessary. Return to the shoulder before releasing traffic. There are two ways to release traffic. The first way is from the closed lane. To release traffic from the closed lane, while standing on the shoulder, turn the slow side of the paddle to face vehicles. With your free arm, signal the drivers to proceed into the open lane. Be direct and point in the direction you want the traffic to go. Never wave the paddle. After all the vehicles have passed, turn the paddle to stop and wait for the next vehicle. The second way to release traffic is from the open lane. After the road is clear ahead, while standing on the shoulder, display the slow paddle to the drivers. With your free arm, motion the drivers to proceed. Again, be direct and deliberate in your motions. In some cases, you may not need to stop traffic, but slow it down. In these cases, always stand on the shoulder of the road or in a closed off portion of roadway, displaying the slow paddle to oncoming traffic. With your free arm outstretched, motion in an up and down motion to slow traffic down. Remember, never stand in the path of oncoming traffic. If you'd learn the three basic skills of stopping, releasing, and slowing traffic, you'll be well prepared for any flagging operation. Situations will vary, and how you apply these skills will differ from project to project. Remember, never start any flagging operation until the advanced warning signs are in place. These signs tell the driver that you're controlling traffic. Without these advanced warning signs, the driver does not expect you to be in the roadway. Now, let's look at some typical situations a flagger may face. The first situation, probably the most common, is a one-lane, two-way flagger operation. Two flaggers are typically used. They must be able to communicate with one another. This can be done by keeping visual contact or by using two-way radios. In this case, a lead flagger is always in charge of the operation. If visual contact is possible in the work zone, then the operation normally works like this. One flagger displays the stop paddle and stops traffic. The second flagger displays the slow paddle and releases traffic. The first flagger continues to display the stop paddle and stops all traffic until the second flagger turns their paddle to stop and gives an all clear signal. This signal tells the first flagger they may release their traffic by displaying the slow paddle. The all clear message can be given visually by using a signal such as lifting one's hat. Be careful, however, not to use hand signals that may confuse the motorist, such as waving. When visual contact is not possible, such as over hills or around curves, then radios are the best way to maintain communication between flaggers. The second situation is the use of a pilot car for traffic control. This method works best where the route is particularly long or where traffic is shifted numerous times through multiple work areas. The pilot vehicle is used to guide a train of vehicles through or around the work area. This operation uses a flagger at each end of the one lane section and at all intersecting roadways. In this type of operation, the flaggers hold traffic at each end of the work zone until the pilot car arrives at their flagger station and leads the traffic through the work zone. Often, flaggers must speak to the first stopped motorist to advise them on what to do once the pilot vehicle arrives. A safe turnaround location should be provided for the pilot vehicle at each end of the work zone. Each flagger should also identify to the other flagger the identification of the last vehicle in the convoy. The vehicle selected for the pilot vehicle should be lightweight and easy to handle. It should have the name of the agency or contractor clearly displayed and be equipped with an amber high intensity warning light. The pilot car follow me sign shall also be mounted on the rear of the vehicle. Two or more pilot vehicles may be used to guide traffic through a particularly complex or challenging work area. The third situation is scheduled nighttime flagging operations. These procedures are generally the same as daytime operations, except for some apparel and equipment changes. 
High visibility class three safety apparel is recommended. A flashlight with red glow cone is recommended to supplement the flagger's movements along with the stop slow paddle. In addition, the flagger station shall be illuminated. The auxiliary lighting should be placed perpendicular to traffic to illuminate the flagging station while minimizing glare to motorists. This is the safest way to flag at night. The more visible you are, the easier it is for the driver to see you and to follow your instructions. To stop an approaching vehicle, stand on the shoulder of the road, holding the stop paddle in your hand closest to traffic. Hold the flashlight with red glow cone with the left arm extended and pointed down toward the ground, and then slowly move the flashlight in front of the body in a slow arc from left to right such that the arc reaches no farther than 45 degrees from vertical. Do not stand in the travel lane. To release traffic, turn the paddle to slow and direct traffic to proceed. Point the flashlight towards the vehicle's bumper and aim the flashlight toward the open lane. Then hold the flashlight in that position. Do not wave the flashlight while releasing traffic. This might confuse the drivers. To slow traffic, the flagger shall point the flashlight with red glow cone toward the oncoming traffic and wave the flashlight from side to side. The fourth situation is a single flagger operation. Sometimes only one flagger is needed to control traffic on a low volume two lane road. Where only one flagger is used, the work area must be short and on a fairly straight section of roadway the flagger must be visible to approaching traffic from both directions. In a single flagger operation, the flagger stands on the shoulder directly across from the work area so that he or she is visible to traffic approaching from either direction. Then the flagger can assign right-of-way with the paddle. Remember, a single flagger operation is only acceptable for low volume conditions, that is, roadways with less than 500 vehicles per day, or about 20 to 25 vehicles per hour and where there is good sight distance from both approaches and the work area is short. The fifth situation involves only one flagger restricting only one direction of traffic. An example of this is an area where trucks are loading or unloading and are blocking a lane. The flagger stops traffic in the usual manner. Once the work has been completed and the way is clear, the flagger releases traffic. When releasing traffic on a two-lane highway, where traffic is stopped temporarily in only one lane, turn the paddle a quarter turn so the word stop faces you. In this position, the sign is parallel to the shoulder of the road so that neither the stop nor slow message can be read by motorists approaching from either direction. The sixth situation is a non-stationary flagging operation. In this flagging operation, one or both flaggers move with the work operation. The operation normally works like this. One flagger displays the stop paddle and stops traffic, while the other displays the slow paddle and releases traffic. Radios are typically used to communicate between flaggers. The flaggers take turns stopping and releasing traffic. Each flagger must identify the last vehicle in the convoy to the other flagger. Typical signs used for this operation may include the road work next two miles, one lane road ahead, and the graphic flagger symbol sign. Additional graphic flagger symbol signs and their sign stands may be placed every half mile after the initial graphic flagger symbol sign. These signs are laid on the ground so that they are not visible to traffic. A sign stand may be placed on top of the sign to keep it from blowing away. It is your job as a flagger to ensure that you are visible to motorists at all times as the work progresses. Do not put yourself in an unsafe location. It is also critical and your responsibility that you have an escape route at all times. When you arrive at a graphic flagger symbol sign, it may be your job to install it on the stand. The flagger must stop traffic first before installing the sign. If traffic is heavy, you should contact your supervisor as you are approaching the sign so someone can assist you with the installation. Communication is critical between flaggers. The flagger should also be able to communicate with the supervisor or pilot car driver throughout their shift 
in case help is needed to install additional graphic flagger symbol signs or possibly help a flagger to move to a safe and visible flagging location. The seventh and final situation deals with emergencies such as a broken utility line, a crash, fallen tree, or a washout. In these unplanned situations, the proper flagging equipment may not always be available. In that case, a 24 by 24 inch square red flag may be used for flagging traffic. When used at night, both sides of the flag shall be retro-reflectorized red-orange. Orange flags shall not be used for flagging operations. In emergencies, your first priority is to warn the public of the hazard. To stop traffic, stand on the shoulder of the road and extend the flag out to your side. Raise your other hand to the stop position. To release traffic, drop the flag to your side and with your free hand, motion the traffic to proceed. Never use the flag to motion traffic through. This confuses the drivers. To alert and slow traffic, extend the flag out to your side. Move the flag up and down from the ground to shoulder height. As soon as the proper equipment is available, the stop slow paddle should be used. Whenever a roadway intersects with the two-lane flagging operation, it must also be controlled by a flagger. A road work ahead and graphic flagger symbol sign is used prior to the flagger controlling the intersecting roadway. A temporary traffic control plan on releasing traffic at intersecting roadways should be developed at the beginning of the work shift. Communication between all flaggers is crucial when flagging at intersecting roadway. Now, let's summarize the seven flagging situations we've just discussed. Two flagger operation. This is the most common flagging procedure. A flagger works on each end of the work zone to control the movement of traffic through the work area. Good communication between flaggers is critical during this operation. Pilot car operation. This method is used when the work zone is particularly long or complicated. Good communication between flaggers and motorists is very important during this operation. Nighttime flagging operation. This can be a dangerous operation because of poor visibility. In nighttime flagging operations, high visibility performance class three apparel should be worn. Overhead lights must be used to illuminate the flagger station. The flagger station shall be illuminated and all traffic control devices must be retro-reflectorized. Single flagger operation. This operation is acceptable for a low traffic volume condition where there is good sight distance and the work area is short. One flagger restricting one direction of traffic. This operation is normally used where one lane of traffic is periodically blocked. When using the non-stationary flagging operation, one or both flaggers move with the work operation as it progresses. The road work next two miles sign may be used to warn motorists as they enter the work zone. Additional graphic flagger symbol signs are installed as the work progresses. Do not put yourself in an unsafe location. Be visible at all times and have a planned escape route and never turn your back on approaching traffic. In an emergency situation, a flagger may use a 24 by 24 inch red flag until the stop slow paddle can be brought to the scene. And here are the flagger don'ts. No earplugs, no sitting, no talking on cell phones, no flagging from bridges or other places without a clear escape route. No flaggers are allowed to control traffic at an intersection controlled by an active or flashing traffic signal. Additional information regarding flagging at a signalized intersection can be found in the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Remember, no matter what flagging procedure is used, always stay alert. Face oncoming traffic. Stand alone in a good visible location away from other workers and work vehicles and never stand on the path of approaching vehicles. If you are ever uncomfortable at the flagger station, immediately notify your supervisor and voice your concern. Open communication is key to a successful flagging operation. Your job as a flagger is one of the most important jobs in the work zone. Everyone, including the motorist, fellow workers, and you will depend on your ability to properly follow these flagging procedures. 
If you ever have any questions about flagging operations, don't hesitate to ask your supervisor. The supervisor is an important part of a good flagging operation. As a supervisor, be sure that your flaggers understand their duties. Decide which situation requires flaggers. Select flaggers carefully. They must be alert and have good hearing and vision with the ability to move and maneuver quickly in order to avoid danger from errant vehicles. They should be courteous, able to communicate specific instructions clearly and firmly, and have a sense of responsibility. Remember, the safety of the work crew and the traveling public is in the hands of a flagger. Advanced planning is critical for a successful flagging operation. If possible, a field visit should be conducted prior to the installation of a work zone. During the planning visit, the work area is defined, the location of the flagger stations are determined, and placement of the advance warning signs are located. Sign spacing and buffer spaces may be adjusted based on field conditions to improve the motorist's visibility to signs and each flagger station. The location of additional flaggers and temporary traffic control devices, if needed, can also be identified. Select a good location for each flagger station. The flagger should have a clear line of sight to the back side of the graphic flagger symbol sign. Be sure your flaggers have the proper equipment and the flagger signs are in place before flagging begins. The supervisor and the flagger should always ensure that the flagger has an escape route. The flagger must be able to react quickly to avoid an errant vehicle at all times. A flagger should never position themselves on a bridge or box culvert. Areas with steep banks and rock outcroppings should be avoided. Never position yourself around a curve or over a hill. Fence lines and guardrails are other areas that should be avoided whenever possible. Items such as coolers and light plants must be positioned so that they do not interfere with the flagger's line of escape. If motorists consistently brake hard, then there is a problem with the location of the flagger station. The supervisor should speak with the flagger throughout the day to ensure that the flagger station is highly visible and traffic is responding appropriately. Assure the flagger it is okay to voice their concerns, especially if motorists are consistently braking hard to stop at the flagger station or if traffic is reacting erratically when backups appear. There is nothing more important than your safety and the safety of the crew. Flaggers should be relieved every two hours for a minimum period of 15 minutes. This helps to maintain their alertness while standing in the flagger station. Drive through the work zone and observe the flagger's operation. Unexpected actions by motorists or skidding may mean that the flagger station needs to be moved or adjusted. The graphic flagger symbol sign shall be removed anytime the flagging operation is suspended during the work shift. At the end of the work shift, all signs pertaining to the work zone must be removed. The Automated Flagger Assistance Device, or AFAD for short, is a device remotely controlled by one or more certified flaggers. The AFAD allows the flagger to be positioned off the roadway or within the safety of the work zone. One flagger may control two AFADs, but they must have a clear line of sight to the back of the graphic flagger symbol sign in both directions. Regardless of how many flaggers are used, they must be positioned to have a clear line of sight to approaching traffic. Please reference the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices in the manufacturer's instructions to ensure the AFAD is the proper device to use for the work operation. Prior to using an AFAD, its use must be approved and you must be trained on the proper procedures that will be deployed. For additional information on flagging operations, you may refer to the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the APSA Flagger Handbook. You may want to obtain additional copies of this handbook for your flaggers. Flagging is one of the most important jobs in any work zone. It is also one of the most dangerous. However, with the proper equipment, training, and understanding of the procedures, flagging can be a safe and effective operation.